All right, wanted to do a quick install of the PowerPole Micro. This is actually the uh, CM2 version, which is the Seamonster software version 2.0. Uh, you can tell it's uh, 2.0 because these little stripes here, these bands, are black. Um, the other one, the version one, will be white stripes. Also, you have actual buttons on the top on 2.0. Uh, version one is a different style. So that's how you can tell them apart. I actually, when I ordered it, I thought it was a, a one, but it was actually a two. I don't think they're updating the um, websites. This was an Amazon purchase that came through a marine shop in Florida. So they just, I guess, never updated the posting. Um, the Seamonster 2 software is supposed to be compatible with phones and a few other things. But I'm um, putting it here on my 2017 uh, Tracker Grizzly 1448. Um, things to take note of here is they do want you to install it above the water line. You can see my water line um, is here when I'm up in front of the boat. When I'm back in the boat and I'm, I'm tilted more back, it's actually closer to here. So once this unit sits in there, it'll sit about <clears throat> this height. So I'm going to call that good. The uh, warranties are supposed to be not too bad. So worst case scenario, I'll get a replacement and um, put a bracket in and raise it up if needs be. But uh, install above the water line. I noticed the uh, ridges up here aren't exactly level. There's some high points and low points. So I've just been taking, taking, taking my level off the bottom edge here to get my bubble. So, I don't know, find a good place for your mount. I'm also going flush with the top here, so it kind of makes it easy. All right, uh, 5 16 drill bit going through. I placed one bolt in just to hold it, and I'm gonna start putting the other ones in. All right, so I got the bracket installed. Um, I should mention these stainless steel bolts came with it. These big washers came with it, and uh, nylon lock nuts came with it too. Um, I did add my own little uh, rubber washers inside or outside and on the inside just to help keep things from, you know, uh, vibration. We'll loosen these up a little bit um, and also just keep it watertight. So got this dude level, not going anywhere. Um, next step is let's put in the anchor itself, see how that looks, how it sits, and then we'll get to wiring. Oh, also, I would uh, recommend having some sort of vise just to hold it in place when you're getting your first drills set in. Um, you don't want to end up with it wonky once the, hole, the holes are already in the hole. So um, yeah, let's do electrical next. One last note, one last note on installing this guy. Um, I did use an impact to get these uh, nylon lock uh, now it's tightened down, but just enough to get it tight. And I finished off with the supplied Allen key and a socket on the other side and just hand tightened it. Um, and it's just like changing a tire, you know, make sure you do a star pattern, crisscross, get everything nice and level and uh, equal pressure along all four holes. All right, looking good. Um, the, the bracket for it is just one of these guys. You have a nut on the other side that you're twisting. It's just like a bicycle seat. So get it tight and then clamp it down. Um, as far as level goes, like get it as close as you can. Um, again, this plastic, it has humps in it, so it's not totally accurate. But when you think about the grand scale of things, like you're gonna be moving up and back from the boat. so how it sits in the water, you may want to have it angled down when, if you're fishing in the front, you know, so play around with it. Um, trying to think what else. Here's what the top looks like. Got your plug in here. Um, it looks good. It looks real good. All right, let's get the wiring. All right, here's the electrical box. I got the power pole right there. Ran the wires through this bench seat. They pop out right here. 
I uh, attached the inline fuse, 15 amp that they supplied. I'm not running it to a rocker switch. I just wanted to turn on when the master kill switch is on. Um, so I just ran it to the main positive and main negative with the fuse. Um, that way when I turn everything on, it's ready to go. Some of the things I've been reading online is if you leave, um, say you just have it attached to your battery directly with no um, shut off, um, it's still putting power to the prongs at the power head, so um, it's more susceptible to corrosion. So here's the power head down here. They also say if it's not plugged in, you need to have this dust cover on just to protect it. Um, and so here's the prongs right there. You don't want power running to those uh, constantly, so put it on some sort of switch. I'm about to plug it in here in a second and we will attach my battery back up and we will see what happens. All right, I got it plugged in, boom. We uh, got this all wired up. Here we go. All right, so it is blinking. That's a good sign. Let's um, wheel this out outside a little bit, enough to get the uh, spike in there and let's calibrate it and see if it works. All right, here's what she looks like. Looking pretty good. I got the stake in my hand. It's the eight foot ultralight. Get that glass off there. All right, from what I saw, you put it in and you press your battery button and anchor at the same time calibrates it so it's going to run through 30 second to a minute process okay, it's twice it went through its motions Still blinking green. Let's see if we can just hit down. Yeah. It was pretty fast, it's quiet. Looks badass. I'm thinking with this eight foot stake, I should be able to sit in about five feet of water and anchor down, definitely five and below. So let's see about these fobs came with it. Oh, shout out, that guy's gonna be. Um, these came with it, should be pre um, set up for it. Don't forget to register. You can do it online. That way if it breaks, you're covered. You seem to be pretty good with repairing or just replacing. All right, let's see if this, uh, can we get a tab? Well, let's just see if it works without doing anything. Nope. I wonder if there's like a battery stop or something. This is a dash mountable one. Oh, there we go. This one works. All right, let's uh, let's pretend we're running with it. Hold on. About, yeah, let's just say that's where we're sitting. We'll do uh, anchor down with a double tap. Double tap down. see it's shaking it's it's setting it in right now it did like two or three little pulses it looked like now we can also let's do double up it goes all the way up it won't throw it out and then it should seat it back down a little bit we will see Yep, okay, it seats it just enough to lock it in. Now you can run around the lake. 
So if we hold anchor and then hit up, we should see um, we can adjust our force that the spike drives in. So let's see. Right now it's just at three, so let's bump that up to five. All right, let's try double down again and see how it reacts. You can see the boat moving a little bit. So, I mean, just sitting down on pavement, this thing's lifting the boat up. It's a couple thousand pound boat almost. Maybe that's just the trailer weight, but uh, I don't know. I feel like this is gonna do pretty good. Um, I think that's the whole installation process. Again, uh, try to install it as high as you can out of the water. I think I'll be fine here. This all looks like pretty good waterproof casing. Um, oh, when you're done at the end of the day, they recommend taking the spike out, getting a garden hose and just pouring water down there and running it down and up. Just if there's any sand particles, you don't want that, um, those to stay in there and pretty much, you know, add friction and ruin all the, the bushings and whatever else is on next to these rollers because that's been a common problem, at least with the Gen 1s. But this is a 2.0, so hope, hopefully they fix that. All right, on the water here, I uh, put the dash mounted one just right up in front here. I'm sitting in a uh, three and a half foot. I found four feet oh was about kind of the max on this thing because it's an eight foot pole, but of course, you know, it's mounted up higher can only go until that handle on top hits the top of the uh, actual unit. So we're in 3-1, we should be good. Let's go ahead and hit, I'm gonna hit double down here in a second. There we go. Down she goes. Ooh, I just heard it. This is all sand in here. So plenty of space, this is three, five, and I got, you know, a good bit left. So maybe I can stretch it a little bit more than four. I'm not sure, but you can see we're anchored. The wind is uh, slightly blowing me to the right here, but uh, we are not moving. We're stuck right here, which is good. Um, super happy with it so far. I felt the boat actually lift up a little bit when it hit the bottom there. So at least with uh, sand or rock, you gotta feel that a little bit. So we're gonna go double up. All right, that's the top. It'll go back down a little bit. There we go. So we are free to, to move around a little bit more. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this works for bed fishing. That's kind of the main reason I got it. Um, so hopefully I got more videos in the future. I do want to get one seeing the spike drive down. I have an AquaView underwater camera that uh, would be cool to see. This water, unfortunately, it's clear, but the bottom is very dark and dirty. So uh, camera won't be able to pick up too much, I don't think, at least for a good video. But um, yeah, anyway, so Power Pole Micro with the eight foot uh, ultralight spike. Very happy with it so far. All right, perfect use case right here. I'm sitting in 2.9 feet. There's a little rocky, um, shallow spot right here. So anchor down, I got a, enough breeze to where I'd be on the motor to stay still. And uh, I know there's some stumps right about here. So it's nice just kind of chilling, not stirring anything up, just being quiet, not moving. I'll show you. Bottom right's my speed. I just moved so it rocked it, but we are sitting still. So, so far I'm digging it.